Hello, everyone, and to uh, those tuning in. Uh, my name is Ed Lubin. I'm one of the uh, interns working at uh, Amherst Regional High School, uh, and I want to welcome welcome you all to this portion of the uh, College Roundtable series. Um, I'm very excited about this one. Um, as we have heard from admission reps for, for a couple different topics. But with this session, we're actually going to hear from some of our stu former uh, students uh, from Amherst Regional High School, um, our lovely panelists, uh, our alumni that um, for, for most, I think, um, went through the college planning process and uh, you know, have a lot of rich experience and insight to share about that, as well as you know, how they've transitioned uh, to college and um, beyond. So um, I'm going to introduce them in a second. I just want to remind people that um, for the most part, the audience um, is going to be on mute. However, if you have any questions that you want to pose to our panelists, um, feel free to um, type a question into the live chat. Uh, we will try to sprinkle those in throughout the discussion and uh, leave some time at the end, uh, if we can, for some uh, more questions. So with that in mind, uh, I'm gonna get out, of, get out of the way and I'm going to start introducing uh, our panelists for today. So I'm going to start off with Acadia. Hi, um, I'm Acadia, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm Right, some technical difficulties here. Oh, there we go. All right, um, I'm Acadia, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm at Vassar College. All right. Sorry about that. All right, take it away. Um, yeah, so um, does anyone have any certain questions? If not, I can just sort of talk about my experience um, and how I approach the college admissions process. So um, I'll start, and then if there's any chats I see, I'll address them. So I applied completely regular decision um, to all of my schools. Um, I started out by touring in my 11th grade year. My first tour was at Mount Holyoke College because I knew that I wanted to have a liberal arts college experience. I still don't know what my major is going to be. Um, so I wanted to really have that whole like holistic, kind of be able to explore my options as I went through college. So I toured Mount Holyoke. I really liked it um, and decided that I would continue to tour these Seven Sisters schools. Of course, I understand that not everyone has had the opportunity to tour yet. Um, and I can, and so I definitely understand the limitations of this time. That being said, I would recommend using websites to kind of explore your options and see if you like the way the campus looks. Um, see if you can get in touch with any people who are currently there or not. Um, so I applied all regular decisions to all of my schools. Um, and I, it took me a while to make my decision once it came out as I could not really tour my schools when COVID happened. Um, but eventually I realized that my best fit was here at Vassar College because it was the perfect distance from my home. It had all the fields of study I was interested in. Um, and also they had constant communication about what the COVID situation was and about um, other things like financial aid and such. Um, so that is my college story. Um, I hope that other people um, can relate or if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to just throw it in the chat. All right, thank you. All right, next up is uh, Elliot. All right, can you hear me? All right. I'll hope that's a yes. All right, so my name's Elliot. Um, I'm a, I use the he, him pronouns, right. and I'm a freshman at Cornell University. Um, I'm currently studying computer science, maybe with a future minor in economics, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's a little introduction to myself. 
As for a quick summary of my college application process, um, I just started by looking through the, the FISC's guide to colleges. I, you know, earmarked all the pages that sounded interesting um, and then slowly narrowed down my list into the, the schools that I thought I'd most enjoy spending time at, um, Cornell being one of those schools. At that point, I went through the whole essay writing process, all the tests and such. Um, and then a few months later, I ended up here. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, Elliot. And I think next up is uh, Evan. Hi, I'm Evan. I go by the right. series. Oh, wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, OK. Hi, I'm Evan. Um, I go by the He series, and I'm a first year at Tufts University. Um, uh, I'm thinking about studying environmental engineering, but maybe chemical engineering, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, I haven't decided yet. Um, so, like, what my approach to the college process, I so like I knew the size of the school that I wanted to go to. Like I didn't want to go to a big school, um, but I wanted to be uh, like an engineer. So um, that sort of narrowed down the choices a lot to um, sort of smaller liberal arts fields with an engineering school. And so that's sort of how I landed on Tufts. I actually applied to Tufts ED2. So um, I don't know if, I don't think every school has that, but it's basically like a later early decision round that's binding. Um, yeah, and so now I am here. All right, thanks, bud. All right, I think next up we have A. Hardy. Hi, everyone. You good? Um, my name's RT, and I. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name's RT. I go by she, her pronouns. I don't know if you heard this before, um, but I am at Trinity College um, in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, the college process started for me um, summer of sophomore year just because my friend's parents thought it would be fun to like tour colleges together you know explore the cities or towns they were located in which made the beginning of the process much less stressful i would say starting early is um a way to kind of make the most of each experience at each college you look at um and then you know through my junior year it was sort of trying to narrow down, but just also thinking about, you know, what I'm interested in, where I want to be, how close to home. Um, I knew that for me, financial aid would play a big piece in um, where I went. I, um, summer of junior year, applied to a couple diversity weekends, or they have different names for each college, um, but they're programs where um, the college you go to kind of highlights, like, you know, this is what we do about diversity, like we're passionate about these things. And that was really helpful for me because as a person of color, I needed to make sure that the school I was going to cared about diversity and was actively continuing to work to um, make a more inclusive space as the college um, community grows. Um, and I think that kind of helped me narrow down my choices. Um, I did some tutoring help in terms of the SATs and stuff, but I actually only ended up taking or submitting my scores um, to UMass. That was the only school and the rest were test optional. Um, yeah, okay, I could go on, but um, <laughs> so then, you know, senior year was applications. Um, I tried QuestBridge, but I didn't get in, so then I um, applied through the Common App. Um, I can talk about all these programs if people have questions. Um, and then I, I also did regular decision for all my schools. Um, and yeah, I could go on, but that's it for now. <laughs> Can't wait for your questions. All right, thank you, Harry. I think we got Mohan. Yeah, so my name is Mohan. I go by he, him pronouns. 
Um, I'm currently a freshman at Princeton University, uh, and I'm considering majoring in economics. Um, my college process was a bit extended. I started touring colleges in the spring of my sophomore year, um, and I continued to do that through the fall of my senior year. I took the standardized testing, like RT said. Um, I went to a bunch, like she did, I went to a bunch of diversity weekends. Um, and I applied to Princeton early because I thought it was a really good fit for me. Um, and I applied a few more places, regular decision, and then ended up deciding on Princeton. All right, thank you. Very, we are very lucky to have you all uh, today uh, as we get into this talk. So uh, this talk is um, divided into three areas um, and we're going to kick it off by uh, talking about the college search, uh, the first as one of the first aspects of the uh, college planning process. And um, a question um, that I want to pose to you all, but uh, I will begin with Acadia is, you know, what characteristics were you looking for in a college while trying to build your list of possible choices? Okay, um, that's a super great question. So personally for me, I knew I needed a small school. Um, I wasn't really into like big schools. I wanted a school that had like a very rich history with um, preferably like, you know, like a lot of traditions um, and a, like a strong um, like alumni network that I could access um, because that was really important to me. So I did, so I was really big into um, historically women's colleges. Um, Vassar College, where I'm currently attending, is co-ed, but it is um, historically a women's school. So um, I kicked off the search with Mount Holyoke, like I mentioned. Um, I toured Smith. Um, and then from there, I kind of continued with the Seven Sisters path. I toured Barnard, um, Wellesley, although I did not end up applying to Wellesley. Um, and pretty much everywhere else. So I applied to five of the seven sisters. Radcliffe does, no, does not exist anymore and I did not want to apply to Wellesley. So um, that's where I went. And then kind of from there, I just extended it to a broader liberal arts perspective just so that I would have more options. Um, so I also applied to Wesleyan, um, Brandeis as well. Um, so I would say something that you should know what you want is like approximately what size you're going for um, my sister, my younger sister is kind of starting to begin her college search and she knows that she wants a bigger school than I did. Um, and think about what kind of culture you want your school to have. So um, Vassar does not have a very large sports culture. It is more, it, while it does have sports, it is D3 um, and the sports are super cool, but it's not a, it's not a big sports school. It's not what it's known for. Um, it has a very rich arts culture. Um, we have an art museum on campus that is very beautiful, and I'm really into art, I'm really into theater. So it has all of those really rich departments as well. So that's fine. Thank you, thank you, Katie. Uh, Aaron, do you have some thoughts you wanna share? Sure, so um, can you just repeat the question one more time? Sorry. or I can just try to remember. Um, okay, so in my college search, I think it was really important for me, like I said before, um, to feel included on campus and um, not the odd one out. Um, I think many people can relate to that, but I think specifically I'm talking about being a person of color. Um, it was really important to be around more people who look like me um, and a school that would offer discussion um, and certain events to promote, um, you know, multicultural affairs and um, just more engaging and inclusive, um, you know, courses and clubs, like I'm saying. So um, in addition to that, I don't know if you guys can hear my birds, but I have a tree right near me. Anyway, um, <laughs> in addition to that, I was really passionate or am really passionate about study abroad. So I think all the schools that I toured um, you know, in their generic info sessions, they talk about their amazing study abroad programs. But for me, 
I was kind of kind of diving more deeply. Okay, where do they go? What kind of what would those programs look like? Could I maybe do it in the summer if I wanted to stay a whole year on campus? Um, stuff like that. Acadia mentioned the alumni network, which is really important. I think um, in your college searches, you have to make sure that your schools are setting you up for um, success in the future. So whether that's like a job or you know, well, yes, a job of any kind in terms of research or um, you know, business, something like that, so that you're not, you know, going to college and then you're like feeling lost as soon as you graduate. Um, and then for me, dancing and singing is really important as well. Um, I wanted to try some sports, even if they're recreational, because I think in high school, we just don't really have the time to maybe try all the things that we want to do. So for me, like rec sports are really important and dancing and singing. Um, making sure that I can do the things that make me happy. I think that's really important when you choose your school. Um, instead of thinking about the name, um, how prestigious it is, if it's somewhere that would make you happy, if they have programs that are valuable to you, then go after that because it's up to you and it's your four years, so you have to make the most of it. Um, and like Acadia said, I think the liberal arts experience is really valuable. I love to learn, so I really have no idea what I'm going to end up majoring in. Um, and so I'm kind of just taking the courses for a ride and seeing where I end up. I don't have to decide until sophomore spring, I think. So I'm really taking advantage of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right. On, you said you had a few words to share. Yeah, so echoing what RT and Acadia said a bit, um, focusing on what's most important to you is not gonna be the same thing that is important to most others. So if school size really matters, like look at that. If certain programs are really important, like I knew that I wouldn't really wanna go into like applied sciences that much, um, but math was more important and history is more important. And so I was looking more at schools that could support me in those fields. And so even if other people are interested in a different school, that doesn't mean that it's the right school for you. So really trust yourself and trust what schools have done a good job in showing that they can have a good program and they can support you throughout your time in college. All right, thanks, Mom. Elliot, go for it. All right, so my answer is gonna be similar to what a lot of other people said, but just more tailored to my interests. So I knew that I was interested in studying at a larger school. Um, mainly just because of the resources often available at um, larger universities. And because I knew I wanted to study computer science, I was um, particularly interested in schools which had strong computer science departments um, and many opportunities for undergraduate students to participate in research. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that, you know, not everything, not all my experience would be defined by academics. So I was looking at um, what extracurriculars were offered at schools, um, I'm not interested in playing sports at college, but lots of um, clubs and extracurricular activities were important for me to consider. Um, and then someone, uh, Deborah Ferreira asked what the benefit of applying early is. Um, so I, I did apply early and I think a couple of other people on the panel applied early as well. Um, and so applying early sends a message to a school that um, in my case, I applied early decision, uh, which meant that it's a binding contract if I was accepted. Um, I would have to go and withdraw my applications from other schools. Um, and applying early sends the admissions department of the school that you apply to uh, the message that you know that this is the school that is your, your number one choice, um, you're interested in going there. And also because you send your application in earlier than other students, it, it demonstrates that you, you, know, you have your acts together, you've already prepared your materials on time. And then also just from a, like a stress benefit, you end up getting your decision back um, often much sooner than people who apply regular decisions. So it can make the uh, the spring of your senior year much less, or the winter and spring of your senior year much, much less stressful. Thank you, Elliot. Yes. Now, I want to change gears. Um, some of you may or may not have alluded to this, but, you know, in thinking about a college search, the next step is, um, oh, we have one more person that wants to talk. All right, Evan. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I'll just add 
Uh, I definitely like share a lot of the same sentiments as um, what people have already said. But for me, like the biggest decision was I knew I wanted to um, be an engineering major, but I also didn't want to um, be at a school that was really big. And so that narrowed the, the that like uh, knowing what I wanted to major in really helped me narrow uh, narrow like my choices and choose um, you know, the right school for me. And so, um, obviously like, obviously you don't have to know what you want to major in and it's totally fine if you don't, but if you do, um, that's like a really good place to start. If you're, if you're factoring in both the size of the school that you want to go to and, um, what you want to major in. All right. Thank you. Evan. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, got a little excited there. But yeah, I think um, as we continue thinking about uh, colleges going through the application process, which I imagine is probably one of the hardest uh, aspects of the college planning process. So um, yeah, we're gonna spend some time talking about that. And um, I'm gonna pose this question um, at, uh, at Elliot uh, to start us off. What was the hardest part uh, about the application process for you? What obstacles did you experience and uh, how are you able to overcome them? Um, let's see. I mean, I think the hardest part of the application process for me just came down to um, probably writing the, es the application essays, both the, the personal statement essays and the um, um, like the the specific essays that demonstrate interest in each school you apply to. Um, not because they're like particularly challenging assignments, but just because, you know, it's a it's a large time investment. And it at the time it feels like so much rests on the how well you write these and how well they portray your character that um, I know I spent a, a ton of time just like editing and you know revising these um, perhaps more than I should have. But yeah, that was that was the most difficult part of the application process for me. Elliot, I think Katie had um, some thoughts that she'd like to share. Yeah, um, I was just hoping, so I know that not everyone has access to the same resources at home. Um, personally, I did not have Wi-Fi at my house for the, for the first part of my application process. Um, it's something that I had always had growing up. Um, and it actually ended up being a really not that I, I think that it was good, but I ended up writing my college essay about it and I did get into college. So, but um, in terms of that, there becomes this issue of equity and um, I would really recommend, obviously it's a little different because most people have internet now because of remote school, but I would definitely say because of that, it made me utilize my resources way, way more. Um, I was often in the guidance office talking to my guidance counselor about how I can um, put my best self forward. Um, and she also really, really helped me with time management, which was something that had been very, very difficult for me previously. So I would definitely say in order to make this process easier on yourself, um, utilize those resources, especially in the counseling office or with Ms. Cuppy Gray. Um, so yes, I would say time management was very hard as well as just resources in general. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, Mohan, you said you had a few words that you wanted to share. Yeah, so before. for me, I think one of the hardest. Sorry, I th so, okay, so. Uh, one of the hardest things for me was at least like the stress and the busyness of that semester because um, I was trying to do all of my applications at the same time that I was obviously going through all my schoolwork and doing sports and clubs and all of that stuff. And so um, it led to less time to really spend. And um, so it forced me to really think about what I needed to do and what was most important in prioritizing. And so I think one of the hardest pieces is knowing when to stop and when to keep going on an application and really using the resources available, like others have said. 
um, talking to trusted adults in your life, talking to the people around you, making sure you're not getting behind, but making sure you're not overworking yourself because you can easily burn out. And from early applications to regular applications, um, that's a few months period and you could get really tired during that time. So pacing yourself and making sure you're staying on top of everything you need to do. All right, thank you, Lauren and Aerie. Go for it. Yeah, I think all of what Mohan just touched on is so key. Um, I think that as someone who I kind of was doing the whole college process alone, um, I'm not really sure who the audience is, but I think it's important to talk about my experience. So like at, uh, my mom is a single mom, so I try to do as much as I can um, on my own to not, you know, stress her out even further. Um, and I think that created some stress in terms of like, um, I just could not answer the financial questions on my own. Um, and I think that, um, that was kind of a point of stress, like getting that done is the final piece. Um, and it felt like that was one area where it, other people couldn't really help me with that. You know, that was my family's kind of financial situation. Um, I think that also the financial piece also really um, put me in a bind because I was not sure if, you know, applying early decision would mean getting more money. Um, to touch on someone's question, QuestBridge is a program for low income um, high achieving students who um, you go through a few rounds of applications um, to the program and then to the colleges. If you're if you're selected as a QuestBridge scholar, then you apply to schools. And if a school takes you, then you go there completely for free. Um, and then I can I'm happy to give my email and share more information about any of the stuff that I'm saying later. But um, I was not selected even like in the first step as a scholar. So I applied um, through the Common App, like I said. And I didn't apply um, to any school um, early decision. I just could not make up my mind. And I would. I was feeling like if I chose a school early, then I might, you know, like regret my decision and that was too stressful for me. So I applied to all my schools regular um, and got in with fantastic financial aid. I am on a very good academic scholarship here. Um, and that's honestly why I chose Trinity. Um, I think another point of like stress was the tests, but as I said before, um, mo almost all but one of my schools that I applied to were test optional. So um, I just want to remind people that pe um, colleges are changing and you're not judged on a number any or just a number um, as much anymore. You, it's the whole person, like Elliot was saying with the essay, um, which can be a point of stress. I would say um, because I was doing a lot of things on my own, the resources like Ms. Cuffy Gray, like um, Ms. Muchi Ramos, my friends who were also going through the process or who had been through the process um, were especially helpful. Um, yeah, I think just really utilizing the resources you have. Um, and like Mohan said, sticking to a structure and not letting yourself get too behind, but also knowing when and how to take breaks because it can be so hard and feel never ending, but you will get through it. And it's really rewarding when you do. So just kind of pacing and making the most of it. Honestly, I think I learned so much about myself um, during this process and I'm really grateful for that. So you guys can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Evan, did you have a few words about uh, what was the hardest part about this? application process for you? Uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, the hardest part was definitely um, the essays for me. Uh, I'm like really bad at writing. And so I definitely leaned on like, my dad helped me out a lot on my essays and I tried to like show as many people as possible. So um, I would just say like, listen, um, definitely get as many people to read your essays as you can, uh, all their feedback. You don't have, I don't, you don't have to listen to all their feedback, but definitely consider it because it's valuable information. And, um, yeah, I'm definitely someone who like, doesn't like to be told that I'm wrong. And so it's, it's like hard 
I, at least for me, it was like hard to um, like keep changing your essay when you think that it's good enough. But uh, I think it's definitely good and definitely listen to um, as many people as you can. All right, thank you, Evan. Um, as a follow-up question uh, to this, now that y'all have gone through this process of applying and some of the stages to it, um, what is one thing you wish uh, that you that you did differently if you had to go back? Uh, it can be any portion, any uh, portion uh, of the process. But um, I'll start with you, Mohan. What is uh, one thing you wish you did differently uh, if you had to go back to doing the uh, application process again? Um, well, I would try to, if I was talking to myself like a year ago, um, I would try to remind myself that there are a lot of good colleges out there and there's not gonna be one perfect school. And so focusing more on having a range of options is gonna be a good idea. And you'd be happy, like there are tons of schools where you can certainly thrive. And so um, I ended up being pretty lucky through the admissions process. Um, and it's a lot of luck. Like there's no promises, but just try to show your best self to the colleges and it's going to work out as long as you have a good range of schools that you're looking at. All right. Thank you, Mohan. And I think, you know, looking at what the uh, panelists have talked about, you know, it's evident that um, the students and families out there that there is a lot to consider um, going through this process. Um, of getting, filling out the Common App and the CSS profile, depending on uh, which universities you're applying for, and um, you know, trying to get everything in place um, in order to uh, take full advantage of the opportunities um, that different colleges have to offer. So, yeah, I think there's there are um, obstacles. In that process, but um, as our panelists have kind of alluded to, um, you know, overcome these obstacles with, particularly with the supports uh, provided to you, um, particularly at the at this high school. So there we go. So the last part of this process, after you've applied, got your college applications in. Um, and received um, offers, you know, and even making the final choice, you know, you are on your way to starting uh, your first semester in college. And this can be a very arduous transition uh, for everyone. I know it was for me. And I know it was the case for our panelists here. So I wanted to ask, I think I'll start with, um, ARD and other of you, others of you can jump in after, is what have been some of the successes and challenges in uh, adjusting uh, to college, particularly um, the remote learning aspect of the uh, college that you're in right now? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, lots to say. Um, I think that as everyone has experienced, we are really thrown into um, online learning. And um, as a senior, that was a really interesting um, position to be in because I think a lot of my classmates, it was kind of more like, eh, like, you know, this doesn't really matter. Um, it definitely did, but it also sort of didn't, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'm gonna keep it professional for the parents. For me, during quarantine, um, doing my work was kind of something that got me through. I know, I know, yeah, I am I am a nerd, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> I think, um, but what I'm trying to say is that our teachers at the high school were thrown into remote learning and like really there was no preparation, like 
they had no idea. And I think they really made the most of what they could do. And I'm sure, and I think I've heard that it's, it's going pretty well. Um, I would say for me, um, it's helpful that my, most of my professors either know how to use Zoom pretty well. And so it makes it engaging with different activities we can do online. Um, and some don't, and that's fine because, you know, we're kind of all in it together. I am fortunately lucky enough to have two persons, per, whoa, two classes in person um, and two remote. I think it's really hard for me to focus and main, um, kind of maintain the same engagement that I would if it were in person. Um, and I'm sure people can relate to that. I think making relationships with classmates in terms of studying is something that I really valued in high school. And I think it's kind of hard to adjust to kind of navigating that, those things on my own. Um, and yeah, well, okay, I'll switch back to successes. Um, I think making the most in terms of like staying true to what makes you happy during this time, I think for me, um, it's been crucial that my friends from home have maintained connections. Um, they're on my walls. Um, <laughs> but we also, you know, talk on the phone and everything. Um, and I think making new friends or making new connections with your professors is really valuable. Um, this semester is like none other. Um, I think it only gets better from here. Um, I would say for challenges, I guess I'm kind of already talking about them. Um, <laughs> remote learning, you just, it's not the same. Um, you know, you can't make the same connections. I lose focus. Um, I think it feels pretty isolating um, to not have the same kind of like community um, that I was used to. Um, but I don't know, I think just day by day, as I'm sure most of the students can relate to and the parents, um, is all you can do. Um, I think really utilizing your professors, they want to help you. Um, they're teaching for a reason. Um, I think, and yeah, my professors have just been so helpful and I email them very frequently about questions. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm getting a little off track, <laughs> but there are certainly many challenges, but I think looking towards the positives and the little successes in your day, whether it's, you know, completing one task or trying something new in terms of Zoom, you, you know, you spoke more than once or you spoke at all, or, you know, you asked a question kind of thing. It's the little steps that really make your learning worthwhile. I think it's easy for us to tune out during these times and kind of be like, it doesn't matter because it's online. It doesn't, it's not the same. Um, but I think professors are really trying, teachers are really trying and I think taking advantage um, as best you can will actually keep you more engaged. Um, but yes, I could go on. <laughs> Thank you, Ariane. All right. Katia, go for it. All right, awesome. Um, yeah, so what I was gonna say about adjusting to college, um, Something that's really, really hard, um, I think for a lot of people, is you have this really strong sense of um, imposter syndrome, especially um, if you're in a marginalized group of some sort. So for me, I um, felt very confident that I didn't deserve to be here as much as some other people, and I had a really low self-esteem about that. And then I realized that all of my friends were feeling exactly the same way, and that that was not the case. Um, and we all ended up here in the same place. There's something that passes on each of us that we think that was special um, and that you deserve to be here regardless. Um, on like a similar note, I also, what RT said about doing what makes you happy, I had this idea of who I was supposed to be in college. I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to be very driven. I was supposed to be an overachiever. I was supposed to be taking STEM classes my first semester. Um, I have dropped my STEM class. It was not something that I found um, very personally helpful or engaging to me. Um, not that I don't think people should take STEM classes. Absolutely take STEM classes. I do love STEM. But this specific class was really, um, it's not that it was necessarily academically challenging, but I found myself getting really like bored and 
I was just having a hard time focusing in class. Um, and I realized that it had be been because I had this idea for myself of who I was supposed to be. And I didn't want to be that person anymore. I wanted to be who I really wanted to be. So um, I think that's important is kind of recognizing that you're going to change and you're going to shift and there's going to be different things that make you happy than you expected. Um, and that you really don't have to be who your high school self thought you were going to be. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and Evan. Yeah. Um, are up. So adjusting to college has definitely been like a mixed bag for me. There's definitely some things that are easier or maybe not easier, but more interesting when you're in college. Um, obviously living by yourself is a pretty interesting experience. Um, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, but I, it's definitely um, the difficulties for me at least has been adjusting to the amount of work that I have and like and the conceptual difficulty of the homework that I have. Um, I don't I don't know what I was expecting when I went into it, but um, I definitely wasn't prepared to like be to do homework on a Friday night, but like at some point at some points you like you just have to get it done. Um, so um, just like the amount of assignments that you have that I have at least um, and how they overlap between classes, um, it's definitely forced me to adjust uh, from like the way I was in high school. It's forced me to definitely be more organized, um, plan out my time well especially because um, you don't have, or I don't have that many live classes to go to. And um, I'm mostly on like a lecture, like a recorded lecture schedule. And so making sure that for me, at least making sure that I'm um, staying on top of my recorded lectures, cause like, I don't, I don't even have to leave my room to watch them. Uh, yeah, so the biggest thing for me is probably just um, adjusting to uh, really being organized and staying on top of things that like not do the next day but but sort of making progress making progress on um everything at the same time if that makes any sense uh. thank you Evan. right i think we have a few words from elliot all right, so Evan kind of mentioned this briefly, um, but I found a, a great positive of college is just the, the access that you have to so many interesting um, classes, professors and activities. Um, it's, it's really amazing. You can, there are so many opportunities to like just delve into little interests and like follow your curiosity. Um, and that's been really enjoyable. Um, but like Evan uh, and A already said, it's been it's been very difficult to connect with professors, especially on the uh, with the online format of classes. Um, obviously, when you're I'm fortunate enough to be on campus, so I'm living in close proximity with people, so it's easy to make make friends with them. But it's been especially hard to connect to professors with online lectures and no in person office hours. Um, but when I have made the effort to get to know people, I've, I've found that to be really positive, just like in high school. It's it's always a more enjoyable experience um, at school when you're close, close, at least friendly with your professors and you get to know them more and what they're, what they're interested in. All right, thank you, Elliot. And Mohan, you are up. Um, so my experience has been a little bit different. I'm still living in Amherst because Princeton decided to go fully online. Um, and so I can't speak as much to the community aspect, uh, but I can speak to the classes and the differences between my classes now and my classes in high school. And so um, naturally I'm taking less classes, but they're more specific. And um, I was given the opportunity to take classes that I'd be really interested in. So one of the drawbacks will always be the fact that you're gonna get more work because you're older and they expect more of you, but um, you can also take classes that you really like and those classes can lead to be your major or you could have a career in those subjects. And so um, if you're gonna have to work more, enjoy the work you're doing and take a broad range, figure out what you wanna do and then go from there. And hopefully that'll be a good experience, yeah. 
thank you. Uh, thank you to our panelists um, for going through this, uh, explaining some of your experiences. Um, I know transitioning to college for the first time uh, can be daunting, particularly like in having new experiences and connecting with new people. Um, and it can also be an exciting experience at the uh, same time. So I appreciate everyone's feedback. So with a few minutes left to go, um, I'd like to uh, turn us to our uh, Q&A time where we will be looking into the live chat and seeing if anyone has any questions. Uh, we're gonna do it a little bit differently this time. So I asked our panelists, um, I'll give them a moment to take a look at the live chat and see if there are any questions that they would like to answer. All right, hey, I already go for it. Okay, sorry, I was muted. Um, okay, so yeah, back to QuestBridge. Um, I'm happy to give my email. I don't know if I should do that now. I'll just, I'm assuming we'll do it later. Um, just quickly returning to the benefit of applying early. There are certainly many benefits of applying early in terms of scholarship, in terms of like, if you know, and like Elliot said, and like Elliot did, um, showing the school that he's dedicated and he's ready. Um, for the last question, I applied to a lot of scholarships, thanks to Ms. Cuppy Gray and her wonderful scholarship book. I don't know how long that took her to put together, but what a queen. I could go on and on about Ms. Cuffy Gray, but that's for another time. Please use her. She has, she's so incredibly intelligent as, and has so many reasons for you guys. I really would not have gone through my senior year without her. So um, she's there for you. Um, any idea of where to apply for scholarships? Yeah, so Ms. Cuffy Gray will give the seniors in their usually springtime um, a book of scholarships through the high school that are in the Amherst community and then broader, broader scholarships. And then there are also plenty of scholarships you can look um, just like with a Google search, you know, like there are national, international, and then um, local scholarships. So I spent, um, in addition to doing the online work of my senior spring, um, I applied to so many scholarships because um, as a low income student, I really had no idea what my financial aid packages would look like, how I would pay for school. Um, so these were really my, you know, free money, as Miss Cuffy Gray says, like, how could you not take that up? So um, I applied to the ones that she gave us through the high school, um, local Amherst ones, greater um, kind of New England, Massachusetts ones. Um, there are so many out there, and I actually ended up using um, all, uh, quite a few of the essays I had already written. Um, there was very little new work I had to do. I don't know if that's going to be the same for everyone, but just because I went through um, the process of applying to the diversity weekends and then applying to college, which had, you know, their own supplementals. Um, yeah, I, I felt kind of silly when I was doing it. I was like, why, you know, I'm, I'm applying to so many of these, you know, like, oh, I probably won't get that many, like, um, this feels silly, but I was so surprised. I won quite a few and I, you know, I got a new computer because of my scholarships. I, I have a large sum of money that will certainly last me, um, both freshman semesters and who knows, maybe, um, even past that. Um, yeah, I, I, you, you got to apply to scholarships. I think one thing for me was like, oh no, you know, it's it's senior fall. Is it also scholarship time? And one um, thing that was really, you know, de-stressed me was that that was kind of the springtime. So like application is fall and then scholarships are spring. Um, so there's time to kind of stretch it out. That's not necessarily true. There are some scholarships that are due in the fall. I missed those, but then, you know, I was completely fine. Um, yeah. That's it for now. Thank you, Mary. All right. I think Mohan is fielding a question regarding uh, scholarships. Yeah. So um, 
I already had a bunch of good points there, but uh, one of them was that the scholarships are really helpful. Um, I did not apply to as many, but I applied to the Boulay Scholarship, which is a program uh, national and run out of Springfield. Um, and I was able to get that scholarship, uh, which is for young black men going to college. Um, and so that has been helpful. And also these scholarships can help build connections. And um, as was previously said, uh, there are a lot of essays you have to write. If you apply to the diversity weekend, that's like one round and then the college application, that's another round and then scholarships. There are a lot of essays, but they'll have a decent amount of overlap. So keep track of those because they can be greatly useful to just submit or adapt and that can save you a lot of time. Um, and uh, a benefit of applying early, I just want to touch on that. Um, for me, I applied restrictive early action, which meant I could apply to one private school um, and then public school as well. Um, and I think it's very helpful because for me, I if I was applying regular, I wouldn't really know what options I had. And so I would have probably had to apply to 10 or 15 schools maybe, um, which is a lot of time and a lot of stress. Um, if you have a school that you like and they have early action, then definitely go for it. If they have early decision, then think about it um, because that can be a stressor off of something that you don't have to do in the future. And also um, the chances are slightly higher for some schools. Thank you so much. All right. And Elliot, I think you mentioned that you had a question you wanted to answer. Yeah, just to add on to what um, Artie and Mohan said about scholarships, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about this. Um, there, as Artie said, there's uh, Miss Coffee Great provides a super comprehensive list of opportunities um, for local and some national scholarships. Um, and anyone will be able to look through that list and find different awards that will apply to them and that they consider applying for. Um, also, Artie mentioned that she was able to reuse a lot of her college essays in her when she was writing her um, scholarships. I had a very similar situation. I think after you've got finished your personal statement and your like interest essays, you have a lot of really good material about yourself. And I, I certainly found it very easy to, to repurpose that to try to get some um, resources to help pay for college. Um, yeah, and when, you, when it comes to scholarships, you have you know really nothing to lose, especially when it's relatively easy compared to applying for colleges to apply for them. And you really have so much to gain because as I'm sure you all know, college is often prohibitively expensive in this country. Um, but fortunately, we also have a lot of opportunities thanks to Ms. Cuffey Gray. Um, which are easily presented to us and that we can you know, do our best to go uh, attain some of them. And also I wanna mention the, the Community Foundation of Western Mass. I don't know if that's on the list, but that's a really good option that will um, automatically apply for, apply for a bunch of um, local scholarships for you. And then someone else asked, what's something that you would want a student in the application process to know that you didn't know when you went through the process? So I'll kind of like twist this, this question a little bit to talk about the, the pandemic. Um, obviously, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has um, changed the, our experiences of school, um, but one advantage that high schoolers have right now is that they're, they're aware of it before they end up making, uh, you, you all, you're all aware of it before you'll make your final decision. Um, and I would encourage you to research um, how the schools that you're interested in are, have responded to the pandemic. Um, and what, what policies they have in place to ensure the, the safety of their students um and just see how they're approaching education in this in this time because i know um it's there's not a standard right now um every school is approaching this in a slightly different way um and hopefully you know hopefully next fall looks a lot different than this fall but i think it's best to assume that you know the pandemic will still have an effect on your uh college experience at least the beginning of your college experience um and you should you should plan accordingly and try to understand what you're what you're getting into here Thank you, Elliot, and um, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. I really, uh, on behalf of the Amherst Regional High School community, I want to thank our panelists for taking the time and the energy to really give thoughtful uh, responses and insight 
uh, to our uh, students and families as they venture into uh, the process that we all have completed um, and are continuing uh, to strive through. Um, I also want to thank those who are tuning in for listening and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Much appreciated.